Welcome back to European Space Flight. I'm your host, Andrew Parsonson. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming Rocket Factory Iceberg CCO, Jorn Sperman. The launch startup has just announced that it will have its own test stand at the DLR facility in Lampertshausen. Jorn, uh, would you mind explaining a bit more about this announcement and what it means for RFA? Yeah, absolutely. For us, it's a great deal that we will have a second test site in place uh, to test our rocket engines. So essentially, we have the test site in Sweden that we will continue to use. And now we have also another site, which is much closer to RFA, obviously. It's just a three hours driving distance from here and gives us a lot of more capacity to run through development tests and acceptance testing in the future to realize our high cadence of launches that we are after. Perfect. And, and when is the, the new test then going to be ready? Uh, when is the first test on it going to be uh, occurring? Yeah, DLR needs to be do, do a bit on infrastructure side now, which they intend to complete by mid of next year. So then we can start installing our test center and the infrastructure around it. So I would say towards the end of next year is probably a good guess on how to complete it. With typical delays that you have on infrastructure projects, uh, I wouldn't plan for anything earlier than that. Yeah, perfect. Um, in terms of the work you're going to be doing on the test and what kind of tests will you be doing? Is it just engine tests? Are you going to be doing integrated stage tests? What kind of tests? Yeah, it's essentially for engine tests. So the Helix engine that we're testing right now in Kiruna to do that there, the stage testing of the upper stage um, will continue to happen in Kiruna at S-Range. And, and uh, in terms of the engine testing at S-Range, will that cease altogether and you'll move it all over to, to Lampertshausen or um, will it continue to happen in both uh, tests? It will happen to take place in both sides. So we will need uh, more capacity to get enough engines tested. And for that, we need a second site. And this is why we did now this agreement within one year lead time. So when our first launch occurred to ramp up, they would just have more capacity. Perfect. In, in terms of, of ramping up to, to that maiden launch, um, the maiden launch is currently target for Q4 2023. Mm -hmm. Does that represent a, a slip in your timeline or is that still pretty much uh, on a timeline for you? Nice. Very good. Very good question, Andrew. Um, <laughs> I'd say there's nothing more fluent than a launch date with a micro launcher company or with any launch company. Essentially, you see the same on, um, even on the, on the SLS, right, in the Artemis program in the US. Um, it will, it is the current plan to do it next year, end of next year. Um, and as you are aware, there's a development program in between. Um, stage tests are upcoming. They bear a lot of risk. Um, when everything goes well, end of next year is realistic. The rest, we have to see how things evolve. Perfect. Um, and in terms of, you talked about those stage testing, um, you recently unveiled the first RFA one second stage, uh, the complete stage. Um, mm -hmm. Is this a flight version of the stage or is this still an early prototype? Yes, so it, it is both essentially. So it's an okay. early prototype that we pushed through some tests already and we want to push it now through the integrated systems test. And uh, when it's still possible to use thereafter, we want to fly it, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Will there need to be any uh, modifications, updates, changes to it to uh, shift it from a test version to a flight version, I mean, I know obviously the, the engine bell will be different, but is there any other changes that will need to be made? Yeah, you answered the question already. Exactly. So <laughs> the nozzle SF actually has definitely to change. Um, beyond that, it will be a few maintenance and refurbishment activities to make it fit for flight, but uh, nothing big. Okay, perfect. And in terms of that second stage testing, um, do you have a timeline for, for us in, in terms of, are you looking to do it by the end of the year, beginning of next year? Yeah, as you've seen, it's, uh, the beauty moved already to Sweden. And uh, yeah, the plan is to start and do the testing this year. Yeah. That's the ambition of the goal. Everyone is working hard here in the company now. Perfect. And in terms of that, that uh, test campaign, I'm guessing it won't just be one hot fire test and then put it back on the track. It'll be a series of hot fires. Exactly. It will be a sequence of events, um, shorter campaigns initially, um, longer ones to the end. So um, let's see. Um, what we can achieve in which timeline. Perfect. And in terms of once you finish that second test, you'll obviously be uh, working towards a, a first stage hot fire test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing you're currently in the process of building that stage. Um, when is that likely to happen? When is the stage likely to be ready? And when is that uh, test likely to happen? Yeah, there's interesting things coming. You know that we selected a, a launch site and uh, we said um, the pad has been completed already and our infrastructure is partly ready. So there will be some exciting announcements upcoming soon with uh, more beautiful, nice images, that uh, first stage test shall actually happen towards the mid of next year. So it's uh, 
still a lot of things to do on the hardware side here, but also on the infrastructure side at the test side. So uh, it's keeping us busy too. What, what are the main things that you still need to do? I mean, engines, obviously you need nine of them. Yeah. So there's a lot of them to do. Is that the, the primary um, uh, task that you need to perform between now and the middle of next year? Yeah, essentially um, three things I would say. So on one hand side, the stage itself, so it's in the facility and being equipped while we speak has to go through a couple of tests uh, until we can run the test. Engine manufacturing, so the cluster needs to come together, which has been started and is uh, ongoing, um, but it will eat a lot of resource and time obviously from the team here. And the third one is really on site, equipping the test site and doing getting the infrastructure ready to support that activity. Perfect. Um, and in terms of funding, of course, that's one of the main issues is you can have the best stuff and the best equipment, the best concepts, but if you don't have the funding, you're not going to get there. How uh, funded are you? Are you funded all the way up to that first flight or are you going to need to do additional fun funding before that first flight? Thanks for acknowledging that we have the best hardware and the best concept <laughs> about that. <laughs> Uh, beyond that, uh, no, we are not fully financed to first launch, and that's, uh, I think, fully aware to everyone out there. Um, we have OHB as a strategic investor behind. They are fully committed, so in that sense, uh, that will solve the part in the equation for us. Um, but yeah, we are always looking for other potential external investors to, to join on the game. Um, we have infrequent discussions on that, so let's see. Perfect. And I mean, of course, uh, yesterday's uh, precious payload uh, slip on the RFA1 Max uh, was probably not what you wanted. Uh, is, can you tell me anything more about that RFA1 Max? Um, anything at all? <laughs> is, the, is the launch date really a Q4 2025? That seems very ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting that it slipped through the cracks. I'm not sure whether there's a smaller rocket there's at some point a bigger rocket. Um, we have different ideas, we have different proposals and different things that we're discussing with different um, partners. Some talk too much, some don't. Um, <laughs> we really have to be patient. For us, the most important now is to get the second stage test done there after the core stage test and then getting to a first flight with a small vehicle. And uh, yeah, this needs to happen. And then we see. Perfect, John. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, and congratulations uh, on, on your deal for the new uh, test facility at Lampenshausen. I'm sure that's going to be uh, huge for the company and your, your engine test campaigns. Um, and I look forward to that maiden flight. Thank you very much, Andrew. Talk soon. You're most welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me for another episode of European Space Flight.